going to look at more information on functions. And we have a word problem and a graph we're going to look at. Um, you should have it in your packet, but I'll also read it. Um, with aging, body fat increases and muscle mass declines. The graph to the right, it's actually below, uh, shows the percent of body fat in a group of women and men as they age from 25 to 75 years. Age is represented along the x-axis. So this one is age, this is x. Uh, the percent of body fat is represented on the y-axis. State the intervals on which the graph giving the percent of body fat in men is increasing and decreasing. So they're actually just going to ignore the women one. And we're going to look at the graph at the bottom. And so we want to know where is it increasing. And so... Um, and we give these in intervals. You always use parentheses with intervals of, and when you talk about increasing and decreasing, um, because at the point where it turns around, you're not going to include that in either one. So that's why you will use parentheses. Uh, when you're doing increasing and decreasing, you always talk in terms of the x variable. Right, so on this graph, we are increasing from 25 where it starts. It's increasing to here, but it's still increasing, so we'll just include that. We don't have to make a separate point. So 25, 2, and our scale here looks like 5, so that would be 55. So this is increasing. We'll do parentheses from 25 to 55. And then decreasing, it will start here because that's where it starts down. And it will get a parentheses. Starts at 55. and it decreases to 75. Let's look at this graph and answer uh, decreasing and increasing intervals. Um, and on the ends of yours, I couldn't really tell from the printout, but I believe there were arrows on the ends. Uh, so we will go with arrows there. So you can fill that in on your packet so that it's clear. So decreasing. So this is actually going on this way forever. So it's coming from, you're going with the x value, negative infinity to 0. It's going down. And we're using parentheses and then it's going to increase it starts here so remember you're looking just at the x value so 0 and it's going forever up to the right so it will be from 0 to infinity next we have some formal definitions uh, it's easier to understand than it is to actually work with these definitions but it says a function is increasing sorry increasing on an interval when f of x1 is less than f of x2 when x1 is less than x2. So what that means is x1 is smaller than x2. So here's x2, here's x1. This f of x1 is lower or less than f of x2. Right? That is what it's saying. Then it's increasing. So if your y is bigger as your x gets bigger, um, then it's increasing. So this is an example of increasing. Um, a function is decreasing on an interval if f of x1 is greater than f of x2 when x1 is less than x2. So if we look at x1, say 
x1 is here and x2 is here and f of x1 is bigger than f of x2 as x1 is less than x2. That means it's going down. Um, a function, and that would be the second picture is decreasing. Um, the third definition is it's constant on an open interval. When the graph looks the same, it's the same value for any x1 and x2 in the interval. So this is constant. We'll use these two graphs and answer uh, the following three questions. Um, so for this first graph, we want to find the increasing intervals. Uh, there are no increasing intervals on this graph. It is going down and then it's staying constant. So there are none, right? Decreasing, here it's going down and that is an arrow on the end. So it's coming from negative infinity to negative one. And then it is staying the same and it goes forever. So our x value on the end of that is negative one to infinity. All right, our other graph, and let's see if I can get, I'll start with blue and then I'll switch and see if I can do red. So increasing, we have two intervals on this picture where it's increasing and these would be arrows on the end. All right, so it is increasing here and it's also increasing here. All right, so this is coming from negative infinity up to negative one. And then we're going to do a union symbol and we start climbing again here. So the x value here is one and it goes forever to the right. So one to infinity, it's increasing. All right, let's see if I can switch to red. Uh, decreasing is here. And so that starts at negative one is the x value. And it decreases to positive one. And this one has no area that is constant. We have one more picture to um, answer the same questions. So increasing and the, we have arrows on the end, so it goes forever. So this is increasing and this middle piece is increasing, right? So um, it's increasing, this actually it goes gradually, so it's from negative infinity and the x it goes to is two. Sorry, that should be infinity to two. And it starts increasing again at three to four. All right, decreasing. It's decreasing here. It's going down. And here it's going down. So this is from two to three. And then again, it is decreasing from four and this will go gradually forever to the right. So four to infinity. So we'll do a U, four to infinity. Um, this graph is never constant. So there is not an interval that is constant. We have a couple more formal definitions here. Um, it's easier to understand without the definition, but um, a relative maximum uh, f of a 
is a relative maximum of f if there exists an open interval containing a such that f of a is bigger than f of x for all x not equal to a in the open interval. Um, this is just saying it's the if it's a maximum, it's the highest point in an interval or highest point in the neighborhood is a way. So in this little neighborhood right here, this is a relative maximum. In this little neighborhood right here, this is a relative maximum. An endpoint can never be a relative maximum or minimum. Um, in this little neighborhood right here, this is a relative minimum. In this little neighborhood, this is a relative minimum. Now, it's not the lowest picture on the graph, right? This one is lower, but for its neighborhood, it is a relative minimum. So that's what those definitions mean. Um, I will never ask you the formal definition, but you should see it. All right, a um, couple of things you have to watch out for on these. Uh, the relative maximum or minimum is the x. Uh, it is where it occurs, right? Um, the max or min occurs at the x coordinate, the value of the max or min is a y value. That's very important. So it occurs at the x value. Um, the value of it is the y value. So for this one right here, the we have a maxim, a relative maximum occurring at x equals negative three. The value of it is two. For this one, we have a relative max occurring at 2, the value of it is 1. We have a relative minimum occurring at negative 1, the value of it is negative 3, and we have a relative min minimum occurring at 4, the value of it is negative 1. So that part is real important. For our next one here, I am also going to enter it on the graphing calculator. In my math lab, you can use these little uh, magnifying glasses to make it bigger. Um, but it's easy enough to see this point, the x value, but it is not easy enough to see this y value on here, uh, just eyeballing it. So we'll look at it on the calculator. Um, I haven't really um, talked with you guys about windows. I think it was in the 1.1 video. But this is your values for your um, x, and this is the values for the y. And we'll go ahead and set this window like that so we get the same picture. All right? So I want my minimum x to be negative 5. So negative is down here. 5, enter, All right, my maximum x will be 5, my y x scale is 1, so we're good there, alright, my y minimum is going to be negative 100, enter, my y max is going to be 100, and my y scale will be 10. And the resolution just stays one. Uh, so now we'll go to our function and enter. So I have 2x to the third minus 3x to the 
second minus 36x plus 1 to graph. Hopefully my picture will look the same. All right, good. Um, so I'm just going to move this over for a minute. Um, so you won't see the graph for just a minute so I can read the question. It says use the graph to find any values at which x, which f has a relative maximum and use the equation to calculate the relative maximum for each value. Uh, use trace on the calculator to check. So the relative max it occurs at, right, and this is the relative max. It looks to me like it is at negative 2. That looks pretty clear to me. Right, so our relative max occurs at negative 2, and we want to find what is the y value there. Um, so, and it says to use trace. I would not probably not use trace. Um, I would do second calc value, and I would plug in that x value. Remember we did that before? That will tell us the y. And y is 45. So it is between these tick marks. So that part you have to be careful with. And let me pull this back up. Um, I want to show you something else on here. So I'm going to just clear that out. Um, if I wanted to find the max on here, and I couldn't really tell from my, say my units weren't as nice, say it was in between. All right, I can do second calc, right, and I can choose maximum, which is four, right, and you're going to have to do three things here. You want your cursor to get to the left of that maximum, so you're going to choose a left bound. Use your arrow button. Get to the left of it. Okay, I'm clearly to the left. Hit enter. Now use your right arrow button. You want to get clearly to the right of that maximum. Hit enter. And now it's going to say guess. Hit enter one more time. And it is telling us our maximum is negative 2. Um, this is just um, calculator um, round off error in so many spaces out, so don't worry if you get one that looks like that. So negative 2, 45. That's our point. Right. Uh, let's see about the other question. And move the calculator. Uh, they want us to find where is the relative minimum. Right. And the relative minimum is here. And it looks like it's at 3. I think that is good. Um, we could check it on here, though. Let's check it on here. Let's clear this off. All right. Uh, same kind of steps, except you're going to choose minimum. So we're going to do second calc, which is above the trace button, and choose number 3, which is minimum. All right, I want to get to the left of that, but I want to be closer than I am. All right, that's close enough. So I hit enter. All right, now I want to move my cursor to the right of that point I'm looking at. And hit enter. And you have to hit enter one more time when it says guess. Right, and it says my minimum is at 2.9999. Uh, this is going to be 3. It's just going to be that round off error way out there again. And negative 80. 
right? And we'll find one more way to do that. So 3 is my x, which we could have done visually. Relative minimum is at 3. The value of it, um, and I think I said negative 80. But let's pull that calculator back up. And remember, the other thing you can do is you can do second calc value. That's plugging the 3 in. Or you could have done it by hand. So second calc values, let x be 3. Enter, and your y is negative 80.